here's the calculus video of the LaTeX tutorial playlist for our content team. Calculus is very useful. I, I don't know what better way to start this video with. Anyways, uh, before I go through the calculus tutorial, there's a few organization trick in LaTeX that I'd like to talk about, especially for large LaTeX projects like this. When we're writing a large document like a book, sometimes it's better to write chapters in their individual files, and this is what we're going to do. Because generally, dealing with one large LaTeX document will sometimes lead to unintended consequences, such as an inconvenient editing process. So what I'm going to do to pull off this I'm going to write chapters in separate notes thing is I'm going to first create a subfile called calculus.tech, for example, when we're trying to write a chapter for calculus. I'm going to organize it by folder so that it's easy for us to browse files. And then what I'm going to do is try to copy paste the contents within calculus.tech onto the main document we're currently using, which is main.tech. So the way I can copy paste an entire document's content to another one is called uh, is through the input command, where I can say backslash input and write the address of the document. Then the computer, the later compiler will automatically copy paste the entire contents of calculus.tech onto this file. Now we have also used backslash input a couple of times. Uh, throughout the tutorial already. For example, we have tried to input text from notwork.tech, which as you can see here is not work in the main document. There's also an attempt to insert a graph, which we did here. So backslash input is essentially a one-liner copy-paste from one document to another. That being said, we can Compile the document while editing this subchapter or this subnote, and the compilation will sh still show us the main document, which is quite convenient. All right, so let's get started with some calculus notation. Since the original sampling original sampling frame for calculus content I used for a later tutorial is math fifty three, I am going to first start off with writing vectors. So to write a vector, or to show that a quantity is a vector, we usually write an arrow mark on it, or we bold it. So for example, say we're going to express a vector quantity v, then uh, depending on your practices, you might want to bold it or have an arrow mark over it. If you would like to bold it, what you can do is use the command mathbf and then type v in it, which would give you a bolded V, and some people treat this as a vector notation. Alternatively, some people use this arrow mark, for example, using the backslash vec command, allows you to put an arrow mark over whatever you put in the curly bracket of this command. So for another example, I can also write a vector that is a zero vector and express it as dot, uh, backslash vec zero. You can also put multiple characters in the curly bracket space, and the arrow mark does not extend, unfortunately, but this is how the backslash vec command will help you write all vector notation. Since this tutorial was originally built for the 16A content team, the 16A content team might also want to learn about this. Let's move on to something more important. Well, not more important since vectors are still important, but something a bit more complex. Now we're going to talk about some product in the next. So sum and product are very similar in notations in terms of how to write their LaTeX. So let me show you a few ways to write out sums and products. Again, we're using the multi-line option here for backslash item so that we can have a easier way to edit a bullet point that has a longer content. So first of all, you can write sum and product without bounds as a gen as general expressions. So right to my can say backslash sum, which stands for sum, which stands for summation, as you can see here. And I can write whatever I want to sum, for example, x squared. And I can also do the same thing for product, which is called backslash prod, as you see here. 
if we compile the file, we'll see general summation location and general product notation with our bounds. Now, what if we want a lower bound and a higher bound? Then what we can do is write subscripts first and then superscript later for the sum and product notation. For example, if I want to sum for x from 1 to 5, I can write like this. And do the same thing for prime. Remember that multi-character exponents should still be embraced by a curly bracket. If we do so, lower and upper bound version of sum and product is as shown here. There are also situations where you don't really need a lower bound or an upper bound, but you just need to show that you're summing over the elements of some set. In that case, we delete the exponent here. Say I'm trying to sum over another larger set x. Then I can just type the lower bound, and the summation mark would then look like this. Now you can, what you can also do is, if you want to sum over a larger set or a more universal set that people use, such as the realm of all real number, you can use the command backslash math bb, which stands for math blackboard. But well, here comes an error, and that's because uh, blackboard math text are actually contained in a separate library. Once again, you see a lot of imports here for libraries, but your courses will manage these information for you, so don't worry too much about it. Now, the command math blackboard is written in the package of AMS7, which is fairly similar with the name AMS math here, but let's try to compile the file again. Okay, and now you can see us summing over all numbers in real number in the set of all, all real number. So that's how you can write sum and product. Now the way in which you write limit is fairly similar. You can either have a general expression that just doesn't have any lower bound or upper bound, as we talked about before, where you might write something like this instead. If I'm taking the limit of x squared, then I can just say backslash lim x squared. So backslash lim is the command of limits. As you see, this is a general statement of lim. Okay, so now if I want bounds, or if I want to show that I want to take the limit of some value approaching some other value, what I can do is use subscript and write the bound I have here. For example, x approaches infinity. As you see, you can do this. Now, notably, we can also do multivariable limits. With a very similar fashion. Okay, so that's some products and limits. Let's move on to derivatives and partial derivatives, which have a fair amount of weight to be expressed in LaTeX, but we'll go over some simpler ones for the sake of writing. So first of all, derivatives can be written very naively using fractions, because a derivative such as, the, uh, such as the rate of change of y with respect to x is essentially, in, only in terms of expression, just a fraction of dy over dx. So we can use the similar logic and write fraction of dy over dx. And this d is going to be italicized because it's in math mode, so what we can do is also say math rm of d, so we can deal with a d that is not diagonal, but rather straight. Let me show you what I mean. This is the expression of derivative we get if we use math rm. This is the expression of derivative if we don't use math rm. So you see math rm does provide you an aesthetic impact. Now, sometimes we would not like to write dy dx, but we would like to, like to write d over dx and then y. That is also totally understandable. And we have prepared ways for you to do this. 
which would simply be removing the white valve site. Okay, so that is pretty understandable, I guess. And sometimes we'll also have like second order derivatives. So what we can do is something very similar to what we have done before. For example, if I'm trying to take the second order derivative of y with respect to x, it's equivalently d square over dx square and then of y, right? So in terms of notation, this works. Once again, derivatives are not fractions, but LaTeX happens to be able to express them in forms of fractions, so we'll still use the fraction command. There is also another more elegant command that comes with a separate package to help you automate this process. This package is called physics. Uh, I cannot type physics. Help. Okay. If you want to type derivatives with less effort, you can use the backslash dv command. Where if you write... Well, how did I come up here? Where if you write backslash dv of, say the function of rate of change you're trying to measure and the variable you respect, uh, you're measuring rate of change with respect to, such as dy dx, you can write it in this way via the backslash db command. And as you can see, the product is completely the same. You can also leave the y slot empty, just write x, and add a new curly bracket to it and put y outside, and you can also achieve what we have in the second row here. Now, second order derivative follows a very similar style, but I would rather just use this notation instead. You also have to talk about partial derivatives if you're in other courses. So here's a very, but the way you write uh, partial derivatives is very similar to how you write derivatives themselves. For example, if I want to take the partial derivative of y with respect to x, I would write it this way. Or alternatively, I can do what I have done above, which is leaving y outside. Which would look something like this. If you would like to write partial derivatives with, respond, uh, with respect to two variables, for example, the derivative of some function f of x comma y with respect to x and y, you can also write your function. You can also write your partial derivative in this style. So a lot of these are really just plug and chug and learning the commands, just like how we learn to program in different programming languages. Now, if you want to do a third order derivative, it becomes slightly more difficult but it's not impossible, which is that we just return to the original naive way of writing partial derivatives, that is using the fraction command. In this case, the partial derivative of a three variable function f with respect to x, y, and z, say, Can be written with the fraction command rather naively, but it works out. So this is this should be f, f of x comma y comma z. So that's all about partial derivatives that I have to talk about. And last but not least, we can also go to integration, which is another core part of calculus. The way you write integration is very very similar to the way you write sum and product since they are all notations with upper bound and lower bounds and some content. But in, in integration, we also concern a vertical bar notation that looks something like I, what I'm going to type here. For example, if I'm trying to get the difference, some value like this, Let me show you what I mean by vertical bar notation. So this is what I mean by vertical bar notation, which happens at the final steps of doing integrations. And this is how we can type up a 
vertical bar notation. Let me try to analyze the symbols here. So this is the this is the integrated result of an expression that we were supposed to, for example, maybe integrate. Uh, for example, find the difference of between its upper and lower bound. This backslash bigger symbol makes your vertical bar bigger, or else you're going to be dealing with a way smaller vertical bar, and these will look very crowded. And then I use a subscript such that I can put x equals 1 as my lower bound in the subscript form, and then I put superscript so I can put my higher bound of the integration. Now, this notation also works with brackets, in case that's your thing. And it works in a fairly similar way. I just need to add a subscript and a superscript to the last bracket, as you can see here. But you can also see that these brackets are a bit too small for things to look aesthetic. So I can also increase the size of the bracket like this, so it looks less crowded. OK, now let's talk about integration. So writing integrals in LaTeX is very similar to writing sum and product, once again. Let me write a basic integral for you, which follows the command of backslash int. I will write a general expression first, which just means not adding any lower bound or upper bound. It looks something like this. If I want to add a lower bound, I can just write a subscript. Let me try to integrate x squared from negative infinity to some unknown value. And I can write something to the expression of this, where I just add a subscript to the int operator. If I want to add an upper bound, what I, all I need to do is to add a superscript to it, to the integral notation. So as you can see, this is how we can write out single integrals. We can also write out iterated integrals with a slightly more complex way. But the general key of iterated integrals, where both integrals have bound, is just to write two integral in a series. Which I mean by doing this. By putting integral symbols to themselves, uh, next to each of themselves, and then I write the integrand here. And then finally, I end my integrations expression with dy dx. Then here is my iterated integral that I can work with. Now granted, you can also use backslash math rmd so that this looks slightly prettier. Like this. It is still slightly crowded, but you can also use a backslash here for space. As you can see here. Or you can just add a parentheses as well. Either way works out. There's a lot of way to write uh, integrated integrals in a beautiful way. If we would like to integrate not through a region of known bounds, but just through a general region called R, what we can do instead is to use the command IINT, which stands for double integral operator. Now, if you use the double integral operator, you will not be able to write out the individual bounds, which is why in the iterated integral here, we use two int symbols instead. So if, we, if you like to express the result of an integral integrating over a region R, then you can also write this, and then I'm just going to write f of x f of maybe r comma theta here. And then you can still write dr d theta to end off your integration process. Now, I can also do something that has a triple integral, which uses the command backslash iiint. I know, very intuitive. And maybe our function will also have a third variable, which I'm going to add here for fuzzies. So in this way, you will see a triple integral. Uh, you will see a triple integral iterated through another region R. Here I can actually say iterated through solid S. So these are the general notations that you would probably like to know for calculus when you're trying to write calculus in LaTeX. I don't think you'll need to know how to write double integral and triple integral unless you're in a course that would benefit from knowing iterated integrals, such as CompSys 70. But you might also want to use LaTeX on your own time, so here I still put it in the tutorial. So these are the calculus section, and now we'll move on to linear algebra.